Recognize the patterns of parallel lines with a transversal, starting with corresponding, and then we'll learn how to name the other ones if we can ask ourselves two questions. Uh, the names really have to do with how they behave. What I did here first is I'm using line paper because I want us to take a look at what corresponding means and how it would work on your lined paper. Your line paper has parallel lines. So if we're going to draw a transversal, we're going to do something that cuts through, draw something that cuts through the other lines. That transversal is, I believe, Greek or Latin for cutting line. So the word transversal has to do with what's happening there. The red line is cutting through the blue uh, parallel lines. So what happens when that occurs, if we zoom in, because the line has a continuous slope and it does not change direction, we're going to have a bunch of corners here, 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 and the angles are going to be the same. So if we measure these angles, they are all going to be the same because they match. Corresponding, really when we use it in English, the word we often use it to mean matching, the matching angles. They match in the same spot but on a different line. You go up a line, up a line, or down a line. We could go to the other side and look below. There are angles that would be formed on the bottom. And the, the repeating angle just keeps going down a level. So really corresponding angles are the same angles but on a different line. And it's going to be very important we understand and recognize what um, corresponding angles are because really that's the basis for understanding the other patterns. So let's take a few examples of corresponding angles and see what they look like. Here's a, an example of some parallel lines. And I'm going to use, let me zoom in a bit, I'm going to use a pattern of corresponding angles. And here it is, one angle I'm marking. So I'm really outlining, referring to this angle. And the one that corresponds would be just dropping down a line in the same position. It should be like that. Someone pointed out that it sort of makes an F or a backwards F or, or a reflected F shape. Uh, here's another way to look at it. I like to draw a circle around the center. And then ask around the vertex here and ask yourself where is the position of the angle because corresponding angles will be in the same position. So this position is bottom right of the circle and in this position too we would have the bottom right of the circle. Now the reason I like a circle for our, other than the circle helps us create all the geometric shapes and other things but uh, we'll see later when we get to linear pairs those who know what that is these two angles they'll make half of a circle and we learned that a half circle is 180 degrees so that's why a linear pair adds up to 180 it really would cut off half of a circle. So let's do another example of corresponding in a different position. So I will give you this angle here and if I had asked you to find the one that corresponds or matches it, if I drew a circle it might help. And eventually you don't need to draw the circle, that's the point, is to eventually just see it. But we can see it's the bottom left of the circle, so bottom left would be here these are corresponding angles. If we do a quick example of the four possible combinations that would be considered top right if we use the circle and this would be bottom right hand side and then top left and bottom left. One thing you'll notice as we go, get to naming the other ones is we're going to talk about the inside or outside of the parallel lines, the interior or the exterior. And when I highlight the interior, you'll notice the corresponding angles have one interior angle and one is an exterior angle. 
So then when you ask yourself, is it interior or exterior, and you realize, oh, it's both, that should be your clue that it's corresponding if you didn't notice it at first. So corresponding is might be the most important one because, again, we can use two things, vertical angles and linear pairs, to find all the other ones when we're solving. And that's in the other video for solving. So corresponding angles really means matching angles. They're on the same position but on a different line. Next we can go over uh, two main ideas that will help us to understand the other four names. The first idea is going to be whether something is interior or exterior, and then the second thing is whether they're alternating or on the same side. So when I'm going to ask that question, are they alternate or are they alternating sides or are they the same side? What I'm talking about the side is the side of the transversal, the cutting line. So one way to look at same side might be like this. They're, both angles are to the right. They're on the same side. This other example here, if I use my transversal, my cutting line, I can do alternating. One on the left, one on the right. So we can ask ourselves, is something alternate or is it on the same side? That'll be one part of the name. In case you need to take a moment, you could pause it and take some notes. So this would be the same side because they're on the same side of the red line. These would be alternating side, which means one on the left, one on the right, one for each. And they would call that alternate. So we're going to next learn about looking at the parallel lines and whether it's inside or outside, interior or exterior. So to introduce that, I like to color the interior. So when I look at the one on the left, is it interior or exterior? Is it in those yellow highlighted in the portion in between the parallel lines? Or is it outside of that, which would be where the blue highlighting is? And so those are interior. They're on the inside. So we're going to learn these aren't going to be named same side interior. Okay, but the other one we just did was also on the inside or the interior of the parallel lines. But that's not what we're getting ahead of ourselves. This is just the first question. Are they alternating or on the same side of the transversal? So of what? Of alternating what? The transversal, the cutting line. The red line that I had colored red. The second question we'll ask ourselves in order to name these will be what I just mentioned. Are these parallel or are they going to be sorry, are these interior or are these exterior? Let me get this set up. So the first question, and I'll write them all down in one place, but the second question we're going to ask, the first one was are they alternating or same side? The second question is going to be is it on the interior of the parallel lines or is it on the exterior? And I always like to highlight the interior and then just notice we can notice if they're in that section. So let me give some examples. So looking at the one on the left, this one would be on the exterior because the two angles are outside the highlighted interior part of the parallel lines. The second one is actually interior because the two angles are in between the parallel lines. So if I wanted to ask those two names, which we're going to get to, the first question was, was it same side or alternate? And so this one the first one we're looking at, I'll put a blue line on the transversal, it's alternating, it's alternate. Then the angles are exterior. So it's going to be called alternate exterior. So let's take those two things together or put them together and 
begin to name them. So again, the two questions we're going to ask ourselves, if, if it's first corresponding, that would always be the first question, but if not, are they alternate or are they the same side? Often you'll see books where people call that co, same side as co-interior or co-exterior. Second question we're going to ask, is it on the interior or the exterior of the parallel lines? So let's do an example. That's not a pattern. And just for the heck of it, I'll color the interior. That's the interior. So we could see that these are alternating, one on the left, one on the right. And these are on the exterior, on the outside of the parallel line. So this was what we would call alternate exterior angles. Let's do another example with green. These two green angles, they're on the same side. And then when I ask, are they interior or exterior? They are interior. They would be called same side interior. So the naming has to do with the positioning. Are they the same side or alternating sides of the transversal? Then are they inside interior of the parallel lines, or are they exterior of the parallel lines? Let's try another couple. So again, I'll ask, are these alternate or same side? You might say, okay, they're same side. Then you notice one's interior, one's exterior, so if you didn't notice already, you hopefully notice it's corresponding. Okay. Looking at the second one, are they same side or alternating? Well, they're on the same side. Then are the angles interior or exterior? They're on the outside, they're exterior. And last example, oops, looks like it's ghosting and not erasing correctly. Uh, let's do these two angles here. So again, we'll ask, are they on the same side or are they alternate? Then are they on the interior or are they exterior? So they are on opposite sides, they're alternating and then they're on the interior of the parallel lines, alternate interior. Hopefully that helps some of you begin to see it and understand how it works rather than trying to memorize the patterns, which can be done as well. If you'd like to learn how to solve and find the missing angles, I'll put a link to that video in the, um, in the info below. Take care.